Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video we will be making a high voltage wand powered by a simple plasma lighter. This wand will output upwards of 100,000 volts and is practically a portable Van de Graaff generator. Now to start off we need a plasma lighter. Plasma lighters are fairly cheap to buy. You can buy them in a whole range of prices going from $5 all the way up to $20. I'm using one that's $16 on Amazon and I'll link it right there. Only reason why I like using this one is because it only uses two electrodes rather than four. And a lot of other ones that do use four have a lot more complicated circuitry that produces a sort of X-shaped arc. That's not suitable for our purposes as these four electrodes would only complicate the circuitry required for this voltage multiplier circuit. When we open up the plasma lighter, we see that the power source is a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. The plasma lighter circuitry functions by converting the 3 volts DC into 3 volts high frequency alternating current, which is then sent through a flyback transformer, which converts that low voltage to a very high frequency high voltage. This can be useful for us because the high voltage AC output of the plasma lighter can be sent into the voltage multiplier circuit, and every time it switches the polarity of the circuit, meaning that the inputs of the circuit change constantly from high voltage input on one side and ground on the other to vice versa. And as this happens, you can do special things with the circuitry that allow for the switch to double the voltage or triple and quadruple and so on. Along with the arc lighter, we will also need 15, 15 kilovolt rated high voltage ceramic capacitors. These capacitors must be ceramic as few other capacitors can take the high voltage, high frequency AC seen in the circuit. Additionally, we need 15, 15 kilovolt rated high voltage diodes. To start off building the circuit, we take the 15 diodes and connect them back to back in series. At this point, I would recommend you not to cut off the ends or solder them together. Next, we attach high voltage capacitors in accordance to the schematic on either side of the zigzag. While we do this, we can also test the circuit's progress. The more stages produced in the circuit, the larger the arcs from the output of the circuit should be. These arcs are greatest not when going to earth ground, but rather when discharging into one of the inputs. When all 15 stages are complete, we can solder everything together and cut off all excess wires. At this point, the circuit is technically done, although there's one major flaw with it. Every rough edge and point on the circuit currently leaks a ton of charge through something known as corona, otherwise known as ion wind. This purple discharge does a great job at producing ozone, but a shit job at holding in charge, and it means that basically right now the circuit won't sustain any charge for any more than a couple milliseconds. The best way to counteract this is to simply insulate the entire circuit. This can be easily done by just putting it inside of a non-conductive substance like paraffin wax. We can buy a great deal of cheap paraffin wax at the dollar store. They sell candles that are quite large, very smelly, and quite a ripoff, but for our purposes, they will be quite effective. While we melt our wax, we get a large piece of PVC to house our circuit in, and we get some parchment paper and fashion a sort of mold so we can pour in the wax without it going over the trailing wires that we connected to the inputs and making sure that the output doesn't get covered in wax and completely inaccessible as well. As you can see, the next day the wax solidified and the voltage multiplier circuit module is ready to go. Next, we solder the voltage multiplier inputs and the plasma lighter output together. At this point, I take off the original switch on the plasma lighter and replace it with my own limit switch. This is connected with a good amount of wire, allowing us to connect it to the outside of the high voltage wand. Now to make use of the voltage multiplier circuit in a wand, we first have to make a wand handle. Now I've never made any claims to being a mechanical engineer, so my fair attempt at making a handle for the electrostatic device was to throw two mismatched pieces of PVC piping together and roughly tape it or glue it together using a shit ton of JB Weld. Once the epoxy and resin had set, I could easily attach on the external switch with a little bit of hot glue. Now to make sure that the charge that is built up by the electrostatic generator is retained, we have to use an extremely smooth and round conductive object as our top load. 
In the past, I've tried to make my own top loads for this purpose, usually just by flattening aluminum foil around a golf ball or something. But that really never works because you still have a bunch of points uh, that are sharp enough that you see a lot of corona discharge off of. And that's just not good when you're working with over 100,000 volts because that charge is dissipated incredibly quickly. Since nothing I could find or make fit my criteria, I resorted to smashing open a Fushigi ball. I found that the hollow aluminum ball contained within a Fushigi ball is actually aluminum. It is an aluminum ball, so therefore it's conductive and it's quite round. There's no edges on it that I could find, so it's suitable for my purposes and we just hot glue it onto the top of the long PVC pipe housing our uh, array of capacitors and diodes. If it's in good contact with the wire leading out of this array as the output, then we will build up a charge onto the ball and it won't distribute its charge into the air as efficiently as a single wire would, which is good because then we retain that charge. At this point we have the apparatus entirely assembled and we're ready to do some testing with the wand. The one modification I would say this wand could use is a bit of hot glue sealing the bottom all except for the port where you can charge it with a mini USB cord. Again this is just for the aesthetics and it wouldn't have any actual effect on the capabilities of the wand. The wand will readily arc to ground producing one to one and a half inch arcs depending on the amount of charge built up by turning it on. As the plasma lighter circuitry will only stay on for five seconds and then shut off, you can only use it in moderation and it's best to do short pulses which charge up the top load only to um, then discharge the top load again and again. The wand can also be used to demonstrate many electrostatic properties such as repulsion and attraction. This can notably be seen especially when working with very light objects such as tissue paper, printer paper, and styrofoam. One of these cool effects is to spread a bunch of ripped up tissue paper on a flat table and then pick up and then drop uh, the pieces using the end of the wand and this is both demonstrating the attractive and repulsive properties of static electricity because once the paper goes up to the end of the wand, the bulb, the top load, it picks up a charge and then once it's reached equilibrium with the surrounding charge, it uh, has the repulsive effect where it will shoot itself off the end of the wand and back to the table to disperse the charge and it might go again and again back up and down uh, transferring the charge in a matter different from just a singular arc. One other cool trick is to attach a bunch of pieces of yarn onto a metal ring and place it on top of the end of the wand. When it's turned on, you can see that the ends of the, of the yarn quickly will go up into the air. And that's because as the charges are transferred from the end of the wand to the yarn, the strings of yarn themselves will gather a charge and repel each other and repel the the ball that they are resting on. So it lifts them up and they are repelled in the air. Two other properties of the electrostatic wand lie within its influences on two liquids, oil and water. The deposition of charges on water leads to a lot of movement on the surface, which is visible from a side angle. You can see that for the most part, the water is repelled by the wand and there's a slight dimple in the area directly underneath of it. We can also see that the water in the bowl shakes quite a bit when the wand discharges through the water into ground. Canola oil, on the other hand, is not conductive, so it behaves quite differently from water. This is especially notable when we see the oil defy gravity and go up to cover the metallic bulb at the end of the wand. The wand can be used in nearly every way a conventional Van de Graaff machine works, except it's very mobile and can be taken really anywhere and once it's out of battery, it's as simple as charging it with a mini USB cord. With that said, this wouldn't be an amateur high voltage construction and demo uh, video fuck, if fuck, I fuck, wasn't fuck. shocking myself a handful of times. You can see here that a lot of the arcing to my leg is a lot more visible than the arcing that was going to uh, metal pipes that were in contact with direct ground. And that's because direct ground is different from ground in terms of the circuitry that I'm working with. 
the circuitry, ground is the voltage uh, approximate to the, um, the battery output. So if the high voltage can make it back to the input of the circuit, then it's reached ground relatively because it's going from a tremendously high voltage to relatively low voltage. Even if that's 2,000 volts, it's still a big difference from 150,000 volts. So we'll quickly jump to it, and if that means that it's going through the circuitry, like the button, the external switch, that's where it's traveling through my body into my leg, and uh, or rather out the, uh, the top load through my leg up into my thumb and going into the battery or the rest of the high voltage plasma lighter circuitry. And that's not good for the battery, of course. So that's even one more reason not to test it out like this, other than the most obvious reason being it's going to obviously hurt a little bit. If you guys liked this tutorial, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.